One thing that I really hate is starting projects and not finishing them. This thing has been sitting on my shelf for more than a year now. It was one of the first projects I posted on this YouTube channel. But back then I started discovering about PCB actuators and the flexible ones, so all my focus was shifted on those projects. And unfortunately, all the work I did on this thing got lost. It's a real shame because I think it's one of the most complex 3D models I ever designed. It basically has 12 servo motors, a battery and a PCB that all fit in just a 6cm diameter ball. So to make it transform from a quadruped into a sphere, I had to make sure that every linkage can fold into each other. All the parts were 3D printed from shape weights. The legs were a little flexible because they are made from nylon, but this material choice also helped me to use a 0.7 wall thickness and reduce the robot's overall mass. Back then I also designed this PCB which gave me a lot of problems. Its pads were coated with a hazel finish, so I was finding it very hard to properly level and align this tiny IMU chip. But just when I finished the board and was about to start testing the software, one of the programming pads decided to get disconnected from the PCB. And at this point I was honestly demotivated to start over. Now here's where PCBWay makes it seem and rescues this project. As you know, PCBWay likes to sponsor my PCBs and this time they offered me to try their PCB assembly service. And I saw this as the perfect opportunity so that I can continue work on this robot. Which basically makes my life easier because I have a lot of other projects that I'm working on that are still in the pipeline. So this new PCB has the same exact Gerber files as the old one. It's just gold plated, it's also thinner and has a white solder mask to match the rest of the parts. Now to make sure that no pads gets disconnected this time, I milled myself a tiny programming jig which hopefully is going to make things a little easier. Ok, the microcontroller has been flashed, let's check if there is any issues with the servo signals. They are all outputting the correct frequency and duty cycle, so I think we can just go ahead and connect all the servos to the board. This is the first test with all the servos powered in at a 0 degree angle in 3, 2, one. <laughs> the next step is fixing this wiring issue. This is the technique I use to organize the wires. At first I was going to use cable ties but I think this approach is much neater. I didn't cut or glue the wires of the servos because I want to make it easy to replace it if one of them gets damaged. Now at this point you're probably curious about these micro servo motors, they are from Hobby King and they only weigh 1.7 grams. So this tall torque of this motor is specified to be 75 grams centimeter at 4.2 volts and 50 grams centimeters at 2.8 volts. So if we consider the longest linkage which is around 4.5 centimeters, we can approximately find the total acceptable weight of the robot. This result means that in order for the robot to stand on three legs, it needs to weigh somewhere between 50 and 33 grams. So let's see how by far off I am. Now the battery. 44 grams, that isn't too bad. It is a little risky because it's going to be at the exact limit, but just in case we have a problem, I have also found this larger alternative, which is supposed to have twice the torque. So let's start by testing the smaller one first. What I'm going to do is power the robot with the lowest operating voltage, which in this case is around 3.5 volts. I'm going to send the command via Bluetooth to actuate one of the female linkages and see if it manages to hose the weight on only three legs. Okay, so after watching the footage, there is a little tilt on the robot, but I think we have to blame the flexible nylon for that, because the servos are barely drawing any power. If they were struggling with the torque, we would see that current pump right up. Now after doing some experimentation with the limits of the servos, I started noticing that 8 of the joints were not properly calibrated for the robot to close down into a sphere. I also noticed that their two linkages were slightly touching at a certain angle, so again I decided to dismantle the robot, cut the extra bit and recalibrate the joints to form the ball. Ok 4B, it's time to go to hibernation mode. Wake up. Hibernation mode. 
the sphere is not properly closed and it is also a little flexible but I was expecting it to be something like this okay so take a look at this we should have some type of rolling motion going on there okay so now let's stop thinking about rolling for a second and start thinking about the walking algorithm like I said, the Squadrapet has 12 servo motors. So now I need something that automatically calculates the angles of each joint. This way, instead of driving the motors individually, we can just input the coordinates of the tip of the leg and the base. This is what's called the inverse kinematic model. Luckily, three years ago, I have already derived this algorithm for another robot that is very similar to this one. So I'm going to use the same exact model for 4B. All I have to do is just change some parameters and make sure that my typecasting is on point. So now 4B learned how to make some dance moves and also some tiny push-ups, but no walking yet. To take its first steps, we need to select a walking guide. This is basically a sequence of leg movements that when combined together, propels the robot forward. So let's power it on and see if it works. This is sort of working, but the wires are hitting the table and it's keeping it back. Before we cut the wires, let's make some tests with the battery. This one cell LiPo battery is rated at 180 milliamps and it has a maximum discharge current of 6.3 amps which is more than enough for this robot So let's first try to power the robot with it Okay, let's power it on Let's change the mode Okay, so it seems to be connected But I think we need to charge it <laughs> Okay, so the battery seems to be charging, but as you can hear, the servos are still being powered. The charge current is still larger than what it's consuming in this mode, but this means that the battery is going to take forever to charge up. So what I'm going to do is simply not use the battery charger that I designed on this PCB, and instead charge the battery externally. Charging is fully complete, let's try it again. Okay, so that is working, let's change the mode, something is definitely not right with the ratings of the battery, it is saying 35C over here but the current limit protection is definitely kicking in. This is kind of a huge problem because I designed this robot around this battery. It sort of fits perfectly. So let's see what other options we have left. The first thing I tried is adding a 4 ferret super capacitor. This is a little larger than the battery, but it only managed to smooth things out. Another option that I have is connecting two of these batteries in parallel so that the current load will be shared. They should fit okay, but the thing is that I only have one and I don't want to spend another two weeks waiting for their battery. So for now, I'm going to switch to the dark side and remove its current limit protection. I mean, the worst thing that could happen is that it gets all puffed up, right? <laughs> okay, finally, for we show us what you've got. Sorry, but I'm going to leave you a curious about the test video. The good news is that the battery didn't buff up. So I think that third 5C rating was just excluding the current limit protection. The full result will be posted next Tuesday. But until then, you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to see it early. So see you soon.